Hello, my name's Anita Chandradat Singh, and I'm going to read you a book. A lovely, delightful, entertaining book for children. In the book, I am Mrs. Mille Fleur. Mrs. Mille Fleur is the narrator of the book. She's a very interesting person. She's old, she's a grandmother, much like me. I'm a grandmother too, and as all grandmothers do, I love to read stories, and today I'm going to read to you. The Most Magnificent by Junan Alkind and Niala Bhagwan Singh. Mrs. Mealfleur sneezed away the cobwebs from her sleepy shutters. A kite woke her up as it sailed back and forth, tickling her grey ageing balcony. She thought she heard children talking. Ah, yes, she glimpsed them across the street on the Queen's Park savannah. A little boy whispered to the others, I wonder if they are even alive. Maybe, one of the boys shrugged. Maybe, maybe they're taking a nap, the little girl screamed out. Excuse me, are you asleep? Mrs. Millefleur stirred gently, trying to hide that she had dozed off. She raised her roof trying to get the attention of the other houses on the street. Professor QRC, a stern gentleman at the end, was grumbling, trying to restart the stopped clock in his tower. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Next door, Lady Hayscourt was trying to shake off dried leaves that had piled onto her roof. Rustle, 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 rustle. Through the trees, she could hear... Dr. Rumor, who was fast asleep, rattling her heavy iron balconies with noisy, rusty snores. <coughs> the Archbishop was groaning and stretching, showing off his dramatic arches. Over the fence, Minister Whitehall was trying to keep her windows closed as a gust of breeze blew through her coral corridors. Whoosh! On the furthest end, Sir Stallmeyer was making a commotion trying to find where he put the keys to the front door. Clang! 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 The boy shrugged. See, I told you, my daddy said that these old buildings no longer have stories to tell. The girl interrupted. Well, my mummy said that they are an important part of our history. I'm just not sure what that means, she added thoughtfully. Sorry, children, the hearing is not as good as it used to be. Mrs. Millefleur apologized. First, you must understand that we are known as the Magnificent Seven. And yes, we've been around for over a hundred years. Trinidad and Tobago was really different back then. There were few motor cars. We had tram cars instead, and people could ride them all the way around the savannah, and it only cost two cents. Visitors came from all over the country to take a ride, while the police band played songs in front of Minister Whitehall, she explained. The others finally perked up, creaking and groaning a little, shaking off their dusty walls. Feeling really pleased with herself, Mrs. Millefleur spun the statue on the fountain. I was a gift from a wife to her husband. There were many social gatherings in my garden and in my grand rooms. 
important people, brought joy to everyone outside and inside my walls. The children listened intently as Mrs. Millefleur continued. And naturally, as the most magnificent, I... I beg your pardon, Dr. Rumor objected. The other houses glared at her. You? What makes you think you are the most magnificent? Silence filled the street. Everyone looked at Mrs. Millefleur, waiting for her answer. The proud lady paused for a moment. Well, I definitely think the oldest is the most magnificent. Lady Hayscourt huffed her hedges. Well, I was built in 1908. Mrs. Mealfur smiled proudly, as I was saying I was built way back in 1904. Minister Whitehall and Dr. Rumor interrupted loudly. We were built in 1904. Uh, um, 1903 here, called out the Archbishop. Professor QRC chimed his bell to demand attention. You are all certainly not the oldest. I was built in 1902. Sir Stallmeyer shouted, If age makes a difference, then you need to know I'm as old as the professor. Even though I was finished in 1904, they began building me in 1902 as well. One of the boys asked, So, is it your age that makes you the most magnificent? I don't quite think that's right. Mrs. Millefleur suddenly felt embarrassed, realising that she was not the oldest. Age probably has less to do with it, she whispered. Sir Stallmeyer interrupted, gathering his solid structure. I dare say. Whoosh! Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Hi, I'm Janan. I'm here with my newest picture book, the Most Magnificent. I wrote The Most Magnificent because I see these buildings when I'm driving around the Savannah and you ever wondered what's the story behind them? How did they get there? Who lived in them? I mean, they're really big houses. Who cleans them? So that's how my mind worked and that's where the concept for The Most Magnificent came from. Hi, I'm Niala Bagwadzee, co-author of the children's book, The Most Magnificent. For The Most Magnificent, my favorite part of bringing the Magnificent Seven to life was figuring out which personality traits would best suit each building. For example, would Professor QRC be super smart and a bit strict, just like a retired school principal? Or if she were surrounded by a thousand flowers, wouldn't Miss Millfleur's love hosting tea parties in the garden for friends and loved ones? And wouldn't a war hero like Sir Stormire love to tell stories over and over to anyone who would listen? So I hope you enjoyed my story and I'm hoping that you go to somebody old in your life like Granny or Grandpa and ask them what were they like when they were younger? They weren't always old, you know. They were once young like you. And can you imagine the adventures they had? Thank you for listening and you can find more great stories like mine on this YouTube channel.